Women's United Methodist Church, and we'll pray together. This is our point midday where we get to pause together as a community of faith and share in the Upper Room Daily Devotional together. Today is Tuesday, February 27th of 2024, and welcome to our Daily Devotional time together. If you're joining me now live or a little bit later on in the day, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment below, we always like to know who stopped by. Today I will be in the book of James for anybody who is or would like to follow along, feel free to do so in the book of James. If not, feel free just to listen along. So today we'll be in James chapter 1 verses 2 through 12 and I will be reading out of the NRSV UE. Uh, it's a little bit longer scripture today, so these are our words. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face various trials, consider it all joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance complete its work so that you may complete the whole lacking in nothing. If any of you lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all, gen to gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the brother or sister of humble means boast in having a high position, and the rich in having been humbled, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises when it's scorching heat and withers the field. Its flowers fall and its beauty perishes. It is the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, their will wither away. Blessed is the one who endures temptation, such as one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And our focus verse for today is Romans 5, verses 3 through 4 of the NIV, which reads, We also glory in our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And our thought for today is, I will embrace my suffering, knowing that God can use it for a greater good. And our devotion today comes from Christopher King of Virginia. And these are the words that he is sharing with us today. Why me? Prison is a breeding ground for human suffering. Having spent the better part of my adult life behind bars, I have witnessed much pain. Countless times I have cried out to God, why me? Today's scripture readings remind us that God can use our suffering to change lives. Central to that plan in the transformation of our spirits. For many of us behind bars, we come to the point where the only place that left to go is our knees and cry out to God to forgive our transgressions and welcome us home like the prodigal son. I spend my days in here trying to be the man that God created me to be trying to use my experiences and years of suffering to help others. Today I take comfort in knowing that the Lord is using me as a vessel of compassion and love. Today I allow God to use my life as an example of true spiritual transformation. If we allow it, God will change us. And our prayer focus today is families of those incarcerated. Um, I do not have a criminal record. <laughs> Never been incarcerated. Um, but I can empathize with our author of that feeling of searching for hope, that questioning of the why me. Um, the greatest, the greatest experience of suffering that I can think of personally in my life was the month that we spent in the hospital with our son Cooper when he was first diagnosed with cancer. We didn't know it was going to be a month. We had no clue how long that stay was going to be. We didn't know the outcome of that stay. Um, and it was like running a marathon at a sprinter's pace. Um, it was exhausting. And so many times throughout that, it was the why. Why us? Why him? The why, why, why? The whys would keep me up at night. Um, talk about a breeding place of human suffering. Um, and then nine days? Yeah, about nine days into his hospital stays when the COVID-19 lockdown first hit. So just waves and waves and waves of uncertainty and human suffering. But here's what I've discovered in that bout. Where there is suffering, there is also light. 
Um, it's not always easy to see the light. Sometimes you don't see the light right away. Sometimes you see it after the fact. But the light is there. Wherever there is darkness, there is light. Wherever there is suffering, there is also compassion. Sometimes you just have to look really hard to see it. Um, but when our hearts break, hopefully they can break open. And when they break open, you can let love in and love grow. Um, we all experience suffering in this life. Um, nobody is immune to it. Um, some of it is on a larger scale than others, but we will all go through our trials. Um, but how can we maintain that love and that compassion and that love of God and not let bitterness overtake us? Because it is so easy to default into the bitterness, into the anger, um, because that's suffering. Um, misery loves company, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but if you try and change your heart in the midst of that suffering, um, to finding the light, um, it's just so much of a better position to be in. So if you are in a place of suffering, I hope that you are able to find the light. And if you're in a good place, hopefully you can be that light um, to somebody who might be suffering in their lives. We never know what people are going through day to day. We think we know, uh, but you never really truly know what somebody might be going through just under the surface. So whatever you do, do it today in love and in kindness. Well, let us pray. Dear merciful God, use us to demonstrate your ability to mend broken hearts and transform lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope everybody has a great rest of their Tuesday, and I will see you again soon. Take such good care. Bye-bye.